Hello everyone. Uh, in this episode we will um, install all of the panels, install the cables and hook up the inverter. And hopefully we will also be able to um, hook it up to the, to the grid as well. Welcome and hope you enjoy. <music> So the first step is done, panels are all installed, using small clips. And the cables come up from the ground and with connectors here. at that end so two different circuits uh, one for facing west one for facing east and in series all the panels nice installation There's an underground cable to the second structure. So um, the panels facing east on both structures are uh, connected to the one circuit, and the panels facing the other direction on both structures are also on a separate circuit. And the cables come in here and go into the garage. 
so it's not so far not so long cables and if we have a look inside cables coming up here and a nice installation All hooked up to the inverter but as you can see very tense so next is to connect it to the grid and to power it up and then start producing they say that um, the UAA might have a problem with Wi-Fi um, but let's see I have an access point actually in my garage and it's a unify I'm pretty sure it will work otherwise I will just um, add an extra cable for that and take it down to the inverter so not a big problem so I made one special thing here actually as you can see there are uh, two extra cables here and the intention for this is that I will use them in an emergency. So in the other end, they will be connected to only two panels or depending on what um, backup system I select, if it's an echo flower or something else, depending on how much voltage it will handle, I can have two or three panels or more. Uh, and then in an emergency, I can just disconnect and I can connect this one to the echo flow and I will have a battery backup that I can charge from my panels I don't need any extra panels for that I think that's a very good solution so here are my backup cables uh, they made them a bit short so they have to be a um, bit longer and then we have to add connectors to them so in an emergency we basically just have to disconnect one, two, three panels with uh, these connectors and hook up my backup and I'm up and running. It's really an easy backup system. So the panels, you can see the model here. So it's the end of day one, um, inverters all hooked up, uh, not connected to the grid yet, but that's coming. Uh, the DC cables are hooked up uh, and all, of course all the panels are installed and it's looking good. So far so good. I want to give you a bit more detailed uh, explanation to why I didn't um, go for batteries, at least now. Uh, my inverter can uh, absolutely handle batteries. I can connect uh, up to 15 kilowatts of batteries uh, into the inverter. Uh, looking from a backup point of view first, uh, it's not really what I expected and that's the reason why I didn't uh, go for the batteries. What you need is a backup controller and the backup controller will basically switch off the grid when there's no power at the grid uh, and it will switch to uh, switch all of the generated energy to a separate circuit uh, and this is a one one phase uh, circuit uh, not hooked up to the to the central and in fact it will switch off uh, the normal three phase circuits that i have for my house uh, so it's not really what I wanted. Uh, it will be a separate circuit. I need to connect the things that I want to use in an emergency situation to the separate circuit on the backup controller. And that's not really optimal for me. I still think it's uh, good to have batteries to, to um, be able to decide when you consume and generate energy over the day, uh, depending on the energy prices and so on. Uh, so I might consider it in the future to have it for that reason uh, but then it will require the grid uh, being available of course.
So, but in terms of a backup solution, it's not really what I want. So what I decided to do is to go for a very simple backup solution. Uh, this is my setup today, 32 panels, two PV strings. Each PV string has uh, an output of 760 volt. Uh, so what I want to do is in an emergency, I will simply disconnect two of the panels and connect them to another backup, battery backup system, like an echo flow or, or, or something similar. Since this, these systems uh, typically only can handle up to 100 volt or something, I can only use two panels, uh, but that will be enough to charge the, um, the echo flow or the separate backup system. And these can also be extended, so I can potentially have more than two kilowatts. Uh, can be extended with external batteries and so on. And the advantage of this is that I don't need to have the whole battery set up, which is quite expensive. I can have a simple solution. It will be cost efficient and it will also be mobile. I can bring it anywhere and it will have different outlets for charging uh, uh, USB devices or, or using uh, uh, AC equipment and so on. Uh, and it can be used in other applications as well. I can use it daily on, on, on just charging it from the grid directly and having it ready if the power go away for just a few hours or something. And it will not require any extra panels or anything. I can just use my solar panels that I have in a real emergency. So I think this is the best I can do right now. Um, I will monitor my... Uh, consumption during the day and my production during the day and see if I need batteries for that reason uh, to, to be able to control my production and consumption during the day. But I will add on later if I see the need for it. So another day, uh, getting ready for the electrical installation. So the electrician will come today and he will hook up the inverter to the central. Uh, and then we will also uh, start up everything and make it running. So hopefully we'll be done today. So we have hooked up the inverter. Um, there's a connector coming with the inverter. It goes to a safety switch. Uh, so you can turn off the inverter and uh, basically the production of the that is going out to the grid. In the central there is uh, another switch so you can turn it off. Uh, and of course the fuses free phase it's also here this one is also new uh, since I'm going to put in a charger for um, electric car so it's prepared here uh, and it's since we are in the garage it's the right place to have it so we're done with the installation Everything is ready to go. Um, and the first thing we want to do is to start it up. And to start the system, we first want to turn on the DC to the inverter. We'll do that. And then we will just give it a few seconds to start running. It will be running on the solar. Here it comes, start blinking. Now we want to turn on the AC. This will hook up the inverter to the grid. And it will also start the production. So when it's booted, it will start to produce 
directly into our grid and the energy that I'm consuming will of course not go out to the grid it will be consumed directly and the rest will um, be sold to the grid this is a sub central so it's hooked up to the main central in the house um, and, and there I have the energy meter and so on. So the sub central from the garage comes into the main central here. And it has a separate fuses here. And then we have the energy meter here. So and this is a new one that will be able to handle the um, production as well. Uh, as you can see, I have an extra thing here. This is for my Arduino project where I'm monitoring the, the energy meter. Uh, so if you follow my threads about Arduino and building magic mirror things, uh, then you will see it there. There's a separate video on this. So finally, I'm happy to show you this picture. Um, we're actually up and running and we're actually producing can see that I'm currently producing two kilowatts uh, but it has been running for a few hours now and if we look in the diagram here I think the top was 8.8 .8 kilowatts at uh, midday so that's really nice and then it's getting lower and lower now and already if it's just been running a couple of hours I'm almost producing 20 kilowatt hours that's good. We can see um, this is the Fusion Solar interface. So I have an app on the phone as well where I can see all of the data. Um, capacity 12.8 kilowatts in peak. And then we can have a look at the devices. Go to device management. So two devices. One is just a Wi-Fi adapter. That's a dongle um, attached to the inverter. And then we have the inverter itself. Here we also get a lot of data. Um, you can see there are two, um, two different PV um, connections so I have 16 panels in each and right now they are about 500 volt so it's going down everything now it's getting a bit darker uh, I think normal normal production will be over 700 uh, voltage here then there is also some uh, additional information you can get from this interface this is the total if you have several different uh, setups or inverters. For those of you who are watching my um, other video series about Magic Miro and Arduino and home automation and so on, you understand that I must show this picture. So what happened on the Magic Mirror right now is that I'm consuming exactly zero kilowatts that's extremely nice to see and of course we need to update this to show what i'm producing and so on uh, and i will also be um, hooking up my inverter using modbus tcp to the magic mirror so watch out for those videos if you are interested in that video series but i like what i see here so far